Welcome to my latest cake. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West? You are just awesome! And Tino Balducci. Only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives? My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective their friend? Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What the... Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You remember me? No. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst, Nancy. Come here. Uh, excuse me for a second. Nancy. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you ask him about it? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American Teens Against Crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? I kind of agree with Frank. You've got to be kidding. See you in a bit. You know where to find us. This must have been the sleeping car. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. You look pretty busy. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. 
This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Are you saying that Camille's ghost kidnapped Lori? What to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. That's very interesting. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I for one am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. I won't keep you any longer. Come back anytime. This looks like some sort of game. in here looks like some kind of sewing sampler I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers I wonder what's under here and what the deal is with those weird looking bolts hello Nancy hi it's me hi Bess and me hey George what's up what's up you're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people you tell us this is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's the one who insisted we call you Nancy. Only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, Nan? Talk to you soon. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? I don't know. Do you like what you do? I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Tell me about them. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days. FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Where do you think it came from? Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. What else can I do for you? Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Don't mention it. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. 
Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. Looks like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. Citrine, amethyst, zircon... Those are all gemstones. Silver. Pink. What do all those colors have to do with silver? Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. the one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. So it was just all for show? Well, not entirely. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Why do you need a train to find out what happened to him? Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me! See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off, trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues, that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. What about the other people you invited on this trip? If you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. We'll talk some more later. I'll be waiting. The third but two, I promise. Darn, the name of the shoes is so faded I can't tell what it is. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them. Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of them with your cell phone. Then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the wall. Anyway, but send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone, and we'll get right on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? Catch you later. We'll be right here. That 
must be the projector Jake mentioned. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? Again, just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateaux, Chaussette Chateaux, 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 That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateaux. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. Talk to you soon. Let us know what happens. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. I bet I know what this is for. Left pickaxe and lamp with buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? Hey, Nancy. What's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose. And as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece, in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori. You got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. See you soon. Sounds good. A square and a duck. Now, where have I seen those before? James Thurston. Back already? I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell Supplies and Pawn Shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Great! What else do you know about him? Well, nothing. Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. See you in a bit. You know where to find us. Back already? Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer, that James Thurston guy? Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. Right. here welcome stranger listen you by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder as a matter of fact yes i did 
There's a rumor going around that Charlena Purcell's on board. Is that true? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. Hot dang if that don't beat all. I've read every single book that gal's ever written. Best writer would ever lived. Did she get off the train, too? I don't think so. She's pretty busy. Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge, breathing the same air as me. Hot dang! Well, welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. Sample? As in free sample? Some taffy on a stick will cost you two tokens, which you can get by winning both those games over there. How much does it cost to play them? Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Fact of the matter is, they're free. Unless you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that and you'll be headfirst in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Where'd all these artifacts come from? Been in the family for years. For centuries, in fact. See, Buell was my great-great-uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawn brokering. So the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust. And there was Uncle Butte, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So he passed it on to his kin. My great-granddaddy's the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. It was fun talking to you. I'll bet it was. Like to get some taffy on a stick, I'm going to need two different tokens. J.H. I wonder if this used to be Jake Hurley's trunk. You still here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh, no. Of course not. It's just that I think it might contain a lamp and pickaxe that used to belong to a miner named Jake Hurley. Well, if it does, you can forget about him, cause it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin, and he went to junior college. Would it be okay if I tried to open it? Well, now, I certainly ain't gonna let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you know, touch it. Nope, sorry, not gonna happen, little missy. Unless... Unless... Tell you what, you get Charlena Purcell to come in here so's I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. You know what? I've got a better idea. Now, what could be better than me coming face to face with the lady who writes the finest literature this here country's ever seen? Well, that's just it. If you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way, and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so I can meet her and get her autograph. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlena Purcell's career? Good heavens, of course not. All right. You just get me Charlena's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is... Fatima, with an F. None of that weirdo PH stuff. Okay, Fatima. I'll be right back. Yes? What are you working on? 
I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autograph picture would be even better. Imagine that. Me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. I have a pencil here somewhere. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? It turns out that slug wasn't so worthless after all. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat. But I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world-famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Actually, I carry a pencil. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pens. Tell you what, if you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Okay, the object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours. I did it! I won! Talk about luck. Here's your pen. What else can I do for you? Hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Don't mention it. They're all done. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, to Fatima, that'd be great. There you go. Anything else? I'll touch bases with you later. That would be nice. Yes? <gasps> you startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt. Wonderful view. Good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. Well, there's I'll never the key. get that key at this rate. Can't get in without a key. P.B. Hmm, this indentation looks familiar.
In a letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? Hey, Nancy. There you are. We've been looking for you. Yeah, you won't believe the lucky break we caught. Lucky break? Hey, that was the result of good old-fashioned detective work. It was the result of your insisting we stop for a cheeseburger. Guys, what's going on? Well, it turns out that a grandchild of Jake's engineer still lives around here. What's more, he hangs out at the local diner, comes in every day. Apparently, he's pretty ancient. Did you talk to him? Not yet. The thing is, the owner of the diner wouldn't agree to point the guy out unless one of us fills in for a short order cook. He's got to go home and wait for the cable guy or something. And since Joe here barely knows how to boil water, guess who got the job? Way to go, Frank. Oh, and get this. Balducci convinced Lori that Jake's mine is somewhere right here in Copper Gorge, so he, Lori, and John Gray are hiking up the mountain out there even as we speak. Like that bumblebrain's gonna find anything. Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. Good thought. Hey, I better get going. Wish me luck. I'll go with you. You can make me a cheeseburger. Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go with that trunk. Whatever's inside it's all yours. Well, here's Jake's lamp. Another slug. Could come in handy. But where's his pickaxe? Welcome back. Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J.H. carved into it? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? <laughs> Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use a dope and the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? Hey, I could have just gotten you Charlena's autograph, but instead I got you an autographed picture, which is way better. You owe me. Oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. There we go. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Guess I could let you have a piece. Oh, yeah. Got that taffy sorted? Finally. That was hard. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? Oh, no. I would never do that. <laughs> well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. 
I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this, he's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. Of course, five seconds later, he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. So do you know what you want to order yet, Edna? I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddad was the engineer on a private train owned by one... Yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna? I don't think so. Camille was her name. Cam the way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that Granddad had been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake. I ever tell you, but the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell Granddad the secret to finding his mine. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day, though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mine. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Are you sure that's all he said? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Talk to you later. You know where to find us. Wisdom, charity, purity, eternity. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? More pipes to connect. That should do it. <gasps> oh no, what I need is some duct tape.
I moved my microphones, so if you want to play the piano, knock yourself out. Thank you. A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need Sup? for Jake's pre- Would you by any chance have any duct tape? Got some right there in my gearbox. That's the good news. The bad news is, I can't open the box. It's an antique lockbox that I found in this abandoned monastery I scoped out on my show last year. You can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Thanks, I think I will. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. I bet the animal should start from the left shore. That tool I saw in the caboose, I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts. More pipes. Why am I not surprised? Here we go. And naturally, we have still more pipes. There, that looks right. Looks like some sort of steam valve. Sounds like steam from the engine is moving through those pipes now. This goes here. Okay, looks like that there. It should work now. Whoa, looks like I did something right. There, good as new. Oh, sorta. And we have liftoff. Where Jake's mine is? Brimstone Canyon. Don't you look all excited? What's up? I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Way to go! I knew you could do it, Francie! Not Francie, Nancy. Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? That'd be great. Think of it as your reward. 
Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. Don't worry, you can trust me. I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover something huge. Great job, Amy. Uh, thank you. like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. I hope. This is the entrance to Jake's mine. Whoa, what's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Wow, glowing lizards. Cool, but weird. Uh-oh, there's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles. But if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. Okay, so far, so good. I should be able to get through there now. Jake Hurley, I presume? Con looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Your humble friend, Abe. Oh my gosh, this is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is the day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. That's just what I thought, too. See, what I didn't tell you when I gave you that letter Jake wrote to Ruth is that I also found his diary, which is how I found out he'd gotten to be friends with President Lincoln, and that he'd gotten a letter from Abe that he knew would be so valuable someday that he always kept it on his person. Can I have it? Sure. See, I knew if we could just find Jake's body, we'd find the letter. And you did it, Amy. You did it. I'm going to be famous. Good famous for once. So you never really cared about finding Jake's mine? Nah. I mean, it would have been nice if it was filled with gold and silver and stuff. But this is what I was really after. And you followed me because you didn't trust me? I trusted you to find it. I just didn't trust you to give it to me. And now that you have, you know, I'd really, really be famous if I could say I found this all by myself. But even if I got you to lie for me, how do I know you'd keep lying? Oh my gosh! What if there was like this cave-in and we were trapped, but I was the only one who made it out? Uh, excuse me? Oh my gosh! That way I could not only say that I found the letter, but that I tried to save you. Only you did something stupid, and it was all I could do to save myself. Oh my gosh! I'd make the national news for sure, and people would say I was smart and resourceful and courageous even. Lori, you can't be serious. That's crazy. You don't understand. People are finally going to respect me. I have to do this. Sorry. Sorry! The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. It'll take forever to dig through those rocks. There's got to be another way out of here. Maybe I could get out of here in this.
Harry, are you all right? Nancy! Is everything okay? It is now. As soon as we discovered you and Lori weren't on the train, we jumped off and hightailed it back here. What the heck's going on? I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. Darn you, Natalie! It's Nancy. Dear Hannah, some hostess Lori Gerard turned out to be. When her father heard that she'd tried to seal me up in that mine, he canceled all her credit cards and said that from now on, Lori will have to support her.